Okay. And the gang stalking thing, I mean, it's, I was in the Walmart getting some things. And, um, because that's close to us, you know, it's, we live rurally, so you have a rural Walmart, just like in probably your town too. And it started in, you know, there were sounds like a couple of aisles over, this weird whistling sound that was strange, but it was just, it was starting to get, you know, my mind was starting to be attacked, you know what I mean? It was a, a straight, consistent whistle, like they could see me through the stack of things there. I think I was in the aisle where the, I was looking for a toothpaste without fluoride. Of course, you won't find one at Walmart. They all have fluoride, right? And um, so I didn't get the toothpaste. But this whistling was going on. Then people in the aisle couldn't get out the aisle. And then they seemed to be looking at me like I didn't belong there. And, you know, it, it starts rolling, right? And you start hearing other sounds. And, you know, I hear bits and pieces of conversation about things that pertain to me that they couldn't possibly, you know what I mean? It's okay. So, in other words, what happened there? Now, let's, 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 let's break this down. Gang stalking 101, for, for you kids that don't know, that are trying to deal with it terrestrially, you will never, may I just say it again, I'll be the only voice in the whole world that tells you, but, you know, uh, Grandpa Zeph will tell you, look, there is no way you will ever solve it through going to meetings and having, you know, therapy and all that. Because you would be trying to to, to heal yourself of something based on lies. Yes, they, they have objects and satellites and technology and different things they can bring to bear, and that's always changing. And then there's, you know, I had a conversation with a friend yesterday. We were talking about the interdimensional nature of this and how <clears throat> there's advanced technology as well. Every single, let me, let me get it down to the real point of it all. Every single person on earth is a TI. Every single one. Every single soul is tracked from the cradle to the grave by advanced technology that you don't know exists. It's, it's invisible to you and me. Okay, because why? Because these souls are the commodity that is, you know, and also food and everything else. So, so, so we're here like cattle on a farm. Okay, the TIs are people that are very sensitive who see through to the interdimensional, they see through to the other side of this thing. They get a glimpse of what's going on, They're like the people and they live who can see without needing the glasses. So they're immediately targeted. We've got one who can see! And at that moment, they, the hive is on you. But you notice that one day they're there, one day they're not, one day it's uh, benign, one day it's a blessing, one day it's, it's back on, and it's... it's, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, and even sometimes the same people, they're on, they're off, they're on, they make your mind up. Well, they're not, you know, this was the subject of the last song that I was involved in with a uh, brilliant young, uh, or not, he, I thought he was younger than you, I guess he's, well, he's young. I mean, well, let's not even get in the age thing, but a brilliant guy that, you know, deals, he's really um, talked a lot about this and, and we've been having conversations and putting our info together. And it's really helped me out because it's given me a, a glimpse into something that I have to share with you today that's very important. Don't let me leave without sharing it, okay? Don't let me stop the recording and, and sort of wig out on it or get d distracted. It deals with this reality like things that you think are terrestrial, things that you think are solid, are changeable, even technology. And... So as it relates to the TIs, so the TIs basically are sensitive. They, they perceive what's going on. And uh, because you're sensitive, they can mess with you in your head and they play games and they do, they do this gaslighting, but they don't meet somewhere and go over a script. They just gather around you. They just arrive already like they've been in another dimension being scripted for it. And in fact, the people that are involved in it that you may even know aren't the same people that you knew before or that you'll know tomorrow which is the more, the really messed up thing about it. Further to that, um, I'll just give you an example. Um, you know, you people that have problems, all, you call it, you, you, you people that, you don't have to call yourselves, yeah, you could be spiritual warfare people that are getting messed with. Just like um, my assistant and me, we were in, 
we were in, um, we had a, a kind of vacation to, to Maui, and we are in a supermarket, that I think it was a Safeway in Lahaina, and, um, you know, they, they, they started coalescing and started trying to block us, and, and the, the, the person that I was with, uh, Angie, she, uh, she said, uh, do you see that? I go, yeah, it's on. <laughs> you know, and it was like, it was amazing. It was just so perfect. It was your classic, I mean, it's the kind of thing that would drive a lot of you, unfortunately, to hiding under your beds, you know, to just wanting to just, to, because it will trigger that fear thing. But we've been through this, I think, so many times, you know, and, and that, that we, we were able to hold our ground, I mean, barely, because it was really nasty. And the same thing started happening at this Walmart, which hadn't happened in a long time. And I think it's because we've been talking about this subject. You know, the song that we just did, Wayward Hughes, if you want to. Well, I'm going to publish what I need to Don't let me forget this. I need to publish uh, uh, Gary, the, 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 uh, the author of it, I guess. He sent me a breakdown of the lyrics and what they mean. And they're very specific, you know, about the situation. And um, they're very uh, kind of cryptic for the, the world. Well, the thing is, I'm reluctant be, in a way because, you know, the world doesn't need to know how we... We can talk in, like, broken, you know, pigeon English almost and understand each other. You know what I mean? When we understand what we mean. Double-double. You understand what that means? Well, you know what I mean. I throw that out a lot. So you get the lexicon and then you, you're able to kind of shorthand it. Because you're smart, because you get it, because you're on top of it. You're not just going, what does that mean, Brother Z? You're not doing that. You're down the road. We're, we're moving down the road. You and me, we're going down the road here. It's not like we're, we're going to keep going, what does that mean? No, <laughs> get down. Come on, guys. Don't give me that. Look at me. I'm this instrument, a very sensitive instrument. You know what I mean? I can talk to you while you're not even listening yet in the future. That's how loose I am, you know, in this. So you got to trust that I'm going to come up with something. The Lord's going to give me something. I couldn't talk to you in the future from the past here unless I was kind of hooked up, right? On our side, in the spirit. That should be proof right there. Well, I'm not another son. They got powers like that. Yeah, okay. Okay, sure. They, they do. They've Just sit there with your thumb up your bum. Don't do anything. Don't think. Just sit there. Let them throw rocks on you. Die on cue. Have no life at all. No contributions. <laughs> you know, because you've, you're being a good Christian. See no evil, hear no evil, and do no evil. And when Jesus asks you, what have you done? You can say a big fat zero. You took that gift and that talent and you buried it in the backyard when the other people were out there making progress, advancing, getting more faith, moving more mountains, seeing it manifest, seeing the things of Jesus be exceeded even the things he did, the miracles he did, even more so than Jesus. And he has given you his blessing. One of those things is vision. One of those things is sensitivity, like being an instrument, being able to see past, present, future, and all how it all works. You know, That's a gift beyond Jesus. Greater things you will do, he said. And that would be a greater thing. Although he had perfect vision. I mean, he had... You know, but the others didn't. They had the Pentecost. They had the Holy Spirit. They had a, a kind of a glimpse of it all, but they didn't quite. You know, we've we've had to, you know, to survive. We we needed more than that, and we got more. We had to start walking, and make progress. We couldn't just stay there going, "Mommy, mommy." We couldn't do that. I, I tried that. And, and, and mommy turned into a monster. I had no help. No one, they knew everything, but they weren't going to tell me. So it's been a long journey, and now I'm giving back to you so that you can, can avoid a lot of the pitfalls that I had to go through and a lot of the suffering that I did 
you know, it, 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 the suffering will not be in vain. Should you benefit, then my suffering would be for a cause, for, for your benefit. It wouldn't have been in vain, you see. And I suffered really a lot and hard. I don't complain that much about it, but it was life and death stuff, you know, really hard, really hard. You wouldn't, wouldn't even want to, you probably haven't even experienced anything like that. Um, maybe you have. I mean, it's, it's, it would be akin to being on a battlefield in Vietnam or something, you know, only in, only in a, a, diff, a different way in terms of torture, and mental torture, and ostracization, bullying, gang stalking, supernatural events, poisoning, you know, just, just awful time, you know, you wonder... And the answer that I have about all that is um, it goes to the fact that the people that are watching you know what you're going to do. They, they don't see a linear you. They see you past, present, future combined. So you can be picked on or picked out to be targeted on something that you may do 20 years from now. And they start in on you, you know, today. You see what I mean? So you go, well, I'm not really sensitive. I didn't say no to the devil. And you may even be dancing with the devil for all we know. But at some point you're going to repent, you see, because you realize that your own people are stalking you. Your own people have put a knife in your back. There's no future with you and the devil because they know you don't belong to the devil. You belong. You're the prodigal son. And they're going to throw rocks at you because they know you are ahead of time. Now, I've got your attention. Thank you. Okay, so let's go to the next thing. So in reality, you know, and which is what you've got to grok in order to get through this thing, God wants you to know reality a little better so that you can discount some of these events that happen. Now, the other day at the Walmart, it was a little thing. I mean, you know, the, the whistling, it's like, uh, it wasn't quite, um, what's the good word, Zeph? Zeph, you're awesome. You know, it wasn't that kind of insane, insane bullying like that. You know, and, and then, you know, when you're the fool, you go, oh, I don't know. Well, gee, that was loud. I wonder, well, I guess maybe you're right. I'm wrong. So when you have that sheepish attitude, they're going to walk all over your face. They're going to walk all over you. Now, you've got to get on it now and get up with it. Now, you've got to get ahead of this thing. Otherwise, they're going to they're gonna pummel you every day. They're going to, you know what I mean? It's like the bully at the playground. You, you know, you got to punch him in the nose, buddy. you got to punch him in the nose. I'm sorry. And the way you do that, the way that everybody that I know that's been successful has done that, is you got to mock the devil. you got to get, I'm not feign it, you know, like, oh, I'm going to mock him, but inside I'm scared to death. You know, you got to mock it. You got to get, you know, right? Couple of things. One, in Christ, right? We we fear not for our lives. We fear no man, because the Holy Spirit, not uh, uh, we, oh, ourselves, are all cowards, you know. But we get the Spirit of God in us, right? And you get that through reading the Word of God, read the Bible, understand, you know. Let the Lord lead you in the Bible wherever you will, you know. There's great strength in it. We're going to read some verse right toward the end here. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, put on your sword and shield, get on that battlefield. You know, number one, you're a warrior. You're going to have to fight. Two, fight or flight, meaning you're scared and you're going to run away, or you're, you stand there and you're scared to death. It gets worse the more you stand there. That's not a victory. That's not what the Lord wants you. The Lord wants you to have a total victory over that. Now, that fear cord that's being pushed is in the supernatural, it's happening in the in spiritual realm where you can't block it. They're pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. It's a fear coil or a fear center. It's the same thing they're pushing as your animal instinct when an animal runs away, because there's a, right? When you have a timid animal, it's the same thing. It's like some kind of condensed, a deep instinct that you have, okay? Now, we must get to the point where they can't do that. Now, they do it. They try to get me going with uh, the whistling. It, it was a repetitive, over and over, the same, like, <laughs> not musical. <laughs> like that, an aisle over, 
and it seemed it was aimed at me. I mean, I haven't, no, I'm not paranoid at all, so I haven't had a thought like this in months and, and months, and, and so it kept repeating, and it was right there, like they could see right through it. Well, because they're all hooked up and they're all in a, in a hive, of course they could see me, and of course it was meant for me. So there's no use for me saying, hey, I wonder, I wonder is that for me? That just seems so targeted to me. Yeah, it was targeted to me, but, you know, whether the person knew or even better, was there a person there? Because it didn't seem of this world. That was the other weird thing. The whole thing was turning into aliens before my eyes, you know, sort of thing. Okay, so that's going on, right? Now, I keep, and here's what the, my friend and I talked about. We, we usually, we, in a situation like that, we got to get through it. We keep ignoring it. We keep looking the other way, hoping it'll go away. We keep avoiding it, hoping it'll leave us alone. We keep trying to get through, just not, I didn't see that. I didn't hear that. I didn't see that. I didn't hear that. I didn't see that. Where's the counter? I just want to get my stuff and go home. Okay, I didn't see that. Okay, there's a talk of the parking lot, finding a car. Whew, shut the door. Turn the key. Okay, driving, you know. Oh, man. And then, you know, you get out of there. Why it coalesces in Walmarts, of, of all places, it just, it's a... It's a hotbed, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a live wire there. So if you're, you know, one of us, you whatever you, you know, that could happen on occasion. I went, I went in there one time where there's this woman staring at me, walking in like she knew I was going to walk in and, and she had the biggest frown on her face. She was meeting everybody kind of like a greeter and being really nice. And then she saw me total frown, just staring into me, trying to like, not even a human, as I walked by, just looking at me like, like uh, you know, like like some kind of a predator wanting to pounce and kill. And um, I blew it off. Didn't think a thing of it. I smiled big at the woman that upset her greatly. And because um, I I had no cares that day, so nothing else happened. That was the only thing, and it was thwarted because see, I didn't have the fear cord that could be tapped by that. Had I, then what would have happened is the whistling and the grunting and the growling and all the, all, the whole place would have, the whole dimension would have shifted to another dimension where there's the same people, but they're all, you know, like they've been prepping for this moment for all their lives. <laughs> and, and in a scripted fashion, they go at it and start in with the, uh, you know, with the harassment, with the bullying with the, um, you know, with the, with the weird sounds, with the irritating sounds that seem to be meant just for me, and they are meant just for you. Now, it's been more elaborate in my life to where I had, you know, like you say, crisis actors, there's nothing new. I mean, they must have spent a fortune on me. You know, they had houses, wives, lives, people, friends, roommates were actors. Um, you know, uh, and... and um, it's just terrible. Uh, it was, you know, amazing that I couldn't, it was, I was literally on the Truman Show, which must have cost millions of dollars to keep that going. Maybe they spend billions on all this. You know, I don't know. But um, very elaborate, and because the reason I understand that is because when you go against it, or whatever, when they come down on you, it seems citywide, like... You know, dude, you have to use so many cuss words. You know, they come right off the set and they just say, oh, hey, Zeph. Well, you don't know me, but I, I, I know you. But, hey, you know, uh, I think you're doing a good job. But, you know, just uh, watch your back there, buddy. You know what I mean? You, see, if you don't have to go fight certain things. I just stay out of there. You know, you'll get little whispers like that from off stage, right? You know you're on a stage, yeah? And then it, you just keep trying to get through. Okay, if I just avoid this, if I just don't look at that, I'm just going to get through it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now, there's various reasons for being targeted. And we have to realize everyone is a target. And the difference between them and you is they have sold their souls to the, the devil, if you will, in, 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 in uh, you know... Uh, I'm saying that in certain terms, okay, and 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 somehow you're not really belonging there. You're not really part of that. And well, you see, then uh, they have to treat you like a little baby, and they have to 
talk baby talk to you and they have to, you know, so pretty soon your mother, your father, your friends. I mean, there's just nobody that they just kind of look at you like the family pet, like, you know, the retarded fool or whatever, you know, it's, 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 it's a terrible thing to experience. My God, I wouldn't want any child of God. I wouldn't want any child on this planet to experience that. You know, that's the worst form of bullying and, and shunning. And, and, you know, the sad thing about it is you're a pure heart. You mean well to people. You're a blessing to people. But you see, that doesn't count. They don't. That makes you even more of a, of a, of a target, you see. The fact that you're kind and sweet and, you know, you want good for people and you're, you know, that makes you more of a chump, more of a, more, all the more reason to just mess you up, baby. So we got that, like the, the, the kind of the animal sensing playground thing, right? They sense that and they want to attack. They don't know why they want to attack, they just do. And they all go in a hive, you know, they, they, whether you're in the classroom, you're on the playground, you're at the library, you know, it's just, it just never stops. And you don't know why, and it, it's, it, it seems that then the, the, the kid down the block, a, you know, that goes to another school, he's in on it too. How would he know? And there's just nowhere you can go, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. A lot of people commit suicide because of this. Uh, because the, the, the shrinks, everyone tells them, oh, that's crazy talk. It couldn't be all connected like that. This, this, you're just sounding psychotic. You need some medication. And, you know, the, then it's off to the races. They get control of you. They put you on the Truman Show, right? They put you in the, on the movie set. They surround you with, you know, while they keep trying to convince you to give your consent to <laughs> the dragon. Yes, your buddy, the old devil. Yeah, well, all your friends have. Don't be an idiot. Don't be a fool. Don't be a baby. You know, buck up, grow up, pull your socks up and get with it. They'll tell you. And if not, this whole big bad world here, come down on you. What does that make you? A T.I. But when you said, well, what do you mean get with it? What, what does that mean exactly? Don't you see the answers within you, they'll say. They can't tell you what it is. Because they have a gag order. If they do, well, <laughs> bad things are going to happen to them. <laughs> you ask why the news media is so stupid. They're not stupid. They're a hive. They all say the same thing. They don't even need notes that, between each other. No one prepares the talking points. They all do the same news. Have you ever wondered why? They're all in the hive. If they weren't, they couldn't show up at the studio. Because you can't have someone down there working. You even working the lights, the electricity, and you know, running the, uh, the compositing or whatever, whatever they're doing. You can't have people down there at the studio who are not on the same page spiritually. It's like, it's like oil and water. It'll just make the whole place get upset and everything, you know, everything will blow up. So you can't have it. So the, 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 so the government and everybody else is also very interested in this equation because what they're trying to do is paint everybody that is not part of Satan's little musical chair game Ought uh, to be an extremist or to be someone dangerous to society, which of course is ridiculous. That's why they persecuted Christians, because they felt they were a threat. Right? A threat. So they were targeted. Uh, Jesus is a threat to this entire paradigm. So they took Antichrist Jesus and stuck him in all the churches and mind controlled everybody and cut their balls off and stuck them there as, a, you know, they neutered them all, right? And uh, feminized all the men and made them all just nodding heads and kept the satanic uh, ritual alive. You know, the daily ritual, you know, the whole thing. Now, the other way to look at this world is, okay, the satanic ritual is the world. It's all the events, all the news events, everything you see is part of a ritual. It all has a... Has a a connectivity to it and a purpose to it. So they do all their real rituals in plain sight. Um, and, you know, they make Illuminati card games eventually, you know, to kind of point that out to you, that you're on kind of a card game here, right? You're in a simulacrum. You're in a flight simulator. It's not real. So strange, you know, things that are not coincidences happen because it's being manipulated. This model that we're in is being manipulated from the outside, 
including targeting of individuals, okay? And those people are being prodded and targeted, and they do, I, I, I have to say it again, I'm sorry, but they do gamble on you because they're all watching on closed circuit TV. Yes, Trish and I have been on closed circuit TV in Los Angeles. We literally were. You know, there's, when I say literally, that means physical. They had cameras on us in the house outside. There was like a, they were all watching where we went, where we drove to, what store we went to, whatever. It was just like closed circuit TV. But there's another component to it. Um, remember this. They can see all of you and all your houses and all your sins and all the dirty little things you do. They see that all day long. They don't need to put little pinpoint cameras in your house. They have other means of seeing everything everyone does. It's all there on monitors. They're watching. So maybe that'll give you a new, you know, a new impetus not to open that uh, porn or whatever you're doing. You know, not, you know, uh, because it's all seen. It's all, would you, do you want to see the playback on that, right? No, I don't think so. So, um, but for the, the sensitive ones, the pure hearts, you know, and that's the TIs, would be the ones that just didn't make it into the hive, they bounced off the mirror, whatever metaphor you want to use. They're considered a threat because they, when you're on that other side, when you're connected up with the world system, you have interdimensional access to lots of info, right? All the info. And, you know, you have to play pretend. Everyone then becomes an actor. And then all the people that remain are, are the real TIs. And they set up a um, false or simulated world around each one of them. And then you have um, fake, you know, people that are actors that are become your friends and your wife and your children and you think you're living in a real world but you're not it's all been fabricated and paid for but they spend I don't know incalculable amounts of money to set all this stuff up because they really you know because you're really a threat <laughs> you see and you're a threat because if all the rest of the ants in the ant farm figure out that there's an exit you know what I'm saying you know, Jesus is the biggest threat, right? He is the sole survivor, the pure heart, the, the one that turned over the paradigm. That if So they want to discredit Jesus by putting stupid people, you know, just buffoons in the churches as pastors so that, you know, any reasonable person would say, oh, it's not for me. And that's reverse propaganda, of course, you know, double-double, right? No, God, God has his church. He's not lacking in numbers either. It, there, there needn't be a revival because it, we, we, we are who we are. He has everybody that he has. He hasn't lost even a one. So there's no need of revival when you hear that and all the rest of it. It's, religion is just an awful thing. Anyway, even in your religion, they will fill a church full of actors and you'll be the only one that's real there. And they try to convince you until you finally see another one. That's why they... They have to keep them separated because they don't want you to, to compare notes with the other guy to figure out what it is because they're not going to tell you, you know, but then supernatural things happen to you of a very untoward nature and that makes you very upset and then they say, well, tell me what's wrong and they try to be of help to you then and what they're doing is steering you the direction they want you to go. You live your whole life in that way. Now, what about poverty? We have a lot of a lot of people that feel they're targeted, and they devolve and descend into absolute poverty and and uh, unable to work. I mean, they have panic attacks. They're not able to function. They become dependent, and and um, and then eventually it goes. Well, there's no people wanting to be around me. There's no, you know, friends, you know, handling me, and that's because. And this is, I mean, no offense by this, but. If you're less of a threat, then they, they, you'll, you'll have less attacks. You know, but, but still the fact that you are isolated in that way and that you know it, you just don't know how this supernatural flight simulator works. No two people are the same from day to day. We, we had a discussion about this yesterday where, where you know, like, like you see people again and you see them again and you see them again. And every time you see them, you notice there's just something slightly different, like 
not quite the same person. And you might not even notice uh, physical characteristics. Just slightly different. Just not enough to really alarm you, but just kind of like, huh, that's kind of weird. And um, indeed, it's, uh, you know, they're not the same. Whether it's your mother, your father, your friend, your wife, your children. You see, all this is interchangeable day to day, moment to moment. Now you really, before you get kind of like, well, where is this going? I mean, this is making me tear my hair out. No, because you see, the Lord has a plan for you. All I'm saying is, you have to have the Lord. You've got to have the Creator. And the pathway that I think, well, for me, is Jesus, because that's the path that was given to me. I dance with the one who brung me. You may be a Hindu, you may be a Buddhist, you may be any of these things. I'm familiar with all the religions, and that's fine. You may be nothing at all. You may just be a vagabond. You may be a uh, just a displaced human somewhere. And and uh, anyone who's conscious is displaced, by the way. Anyone who's conscious is a targeted individual. I mean, anyone who's conscious is a threat to the uh, to this big simulated lie that seems contiguous but is 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 really broken down into individual components. I don't know what I'll see on TV today, for example. I don't know what the news will be regarding, you know, when I have a concept of Obama, it's like, is there really an Obama? The answer is no, there is no Obama. If I, if I mention him as I did in the beginning stupidly, I may have Angie. Angie, maybe what you should do is just take the first hour, maybe divide it into a, well, no, I wouldn't even, it's not even a good rant. I would just get rid of it. It's just me spouting off. I think the second hour and on is, is really beginning about the 55 minute mark is probably the fillet of this thing. But I don't know, you know, well, do they wait an hour? It takes me an hour to get warmed up. I'm sorry. I'm just, I don't have this stuff like, you know, on tap where you just hit the tap and, and, and away it goes. I just don't have that. So I do have a big support group and I do have a lot of people listen and, and I thank you for that because I, you know, I've been allowed to say all this stuff when before, you know, I'd be shamed into silence. Why? Oh, that's crazy. That is crazy. Shamed and bullied into silence. And not allowed to complete my thought. Not allowed to report. Simply report on what I saw, what I've been through. No, shamed into silence by people who know damn well what I'm talking about. By people who have a vested interest in my absolute dereliction of mind. To make me feel like a fool so I'll act like a fool. No, you have nothing to say. I'm stupid. You guys are, you know, I'm just here to, you know, just to do what you want me to do. Oh, they love that. And if I don't give them that, they push my buttons all day long. All my weaknesses, everything, they keep, they keep putting it on display. It's ugly. It's bad. It's horrible. You know, good. How could God want such a pathetic person as you? And on and on and on and on and on. Never stop. And when I give in, okay, I guess you guys are right and I'm wrong. If I try to give in, they just want to make me a slave. They just want to core out my mind, steal my talents from within me, so you know who's involved in that. And make me just a hollowed out kind of, you know, just like a um, someone on the street mumbling to themselves, you know. I could have been a contender. I would have, could have, should have. Yeah. I didn't, so it's not my fault, though. And I could be muttering to myself about all that for the rest of my sorry life. Or I could stand up. I'll put it to you on the Zeph report, straight out publicly. And take my uh, chances. And that's what I think I'll do. Because you see the alternative is to be turned into a sissy, to be turned into, you know what I mean? And I may even want to be a sissy at times. I may want to be a coward. I may want to be a slave just to turn this thing. It's hard to carry all this. 
it'd be easier just to kind of like, yeah, just between us, you know, and I've, I've come close to begging the devil to take me in and giving up. I mean, that's what it is, isn't it? When you're a, is that what we're talking about with the gang? It's, it all comes from Satan. You, you understand that? It's all supernatural because it's not the same people. The people that you thought you do. Like there's a lyric in this song and uh, it goes to the people that you see are not the people you knew. That's right. That's, that's, uh, that's a very important lyric there for, for me because I, I understood that from when I was a boy. And I saw that was going on and I, I didn't believe it. And then eventually I, they all, I, mean, I'm, I was brainwashed into believing that it was contiguous and not interdimensional and it's simply dimensional and we're just stuck here and it's all the same and there's no answer and that's just it. You do the best you can in living in a vacuum. No, no, we don't live in a vacuum. Everything you do and everything you see is tracked. But that goes for, for them to everyone. That's everyone. Everyone. The reason, well, have they haven't done the depopulation yet. Well, they're, they're trying to find another power source, but right now you're it. So they can't exactly get rid of you because, you know, they need that. But they're trying to, you know, fuse with machines at the same time, thinking that they won't need you as a power source anymore once they go fully robotic, which means, <laughs> which, which means they're dead anyway. <laughs> They're just like extending their deaths. They're, the folly is incalculable how st incredibly stupid they are. It's just unbelievable how stupid they are. It's a laugh, laugh, a guffaw, how stupid they are. Do a jig, they're so stupid. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah, when you really look at it, you know, it is hilarious. They are deserving of being mocked. And when you do mock them, Oh, they can't believe. Not only can this one see, but they're just, I have a very high rank. You can't just mock me. I've been, you know, in charge of you and you're just a, you're just like Truman on the Truman Show and I'm, you know, this is a job for me and I'm not even your mother. I'm not even your father. This is like, you don't even understand what's going on. You're so stupid. You don't mock me. I mock you. No, I mock you, fake dad, fake mom. You're not my mother. You're not my father. You're not my friend. I know what this is, and you're a, a freaking joke. Because, see, you're a slave. You're in a death cult. You don't even have a life force anymore. You have to feed off people like me and keep us separated and keep us in our little lives so if they'd be your battery source. Without us, you would all die right now. So you're the pathetic one, not me. I am in a not a good situation, admittedly, on this planet, or whatever you want to call this, or whatever this is. But at least I'm not you. And that puts me way, how, how much money have you spent on me? A billion dollars? A trillion. You spent, tr that's where all the money goes. You're spending trillions of dollars on these games. Multiply me by all the others and boy, you've got a lot of expenditure going out to keep your simulated world going. Going. But don't think for a minute that some of us don't, aren't on to you. We are on to you. And because we are, because of Jesus, because of the Holy Spirit, because of the Lord opening our eyes, we can see that we're in a simulated thing. We can see we're in a little trap. We need the Lord to get us out. That's exactly what it is. At the same time, our God, the Lord, the Creator, Yahweh, Elohim, God, the One, you know, the Creator, Yeshua HaMashiach, the the God in flesh, the one, this one. He's in charge of everything you stupid people do. He's just allowing you your folly to think you could feed on us to keep yourselves alive. If, if he pulls the plug, you're all dead. You have no right. He's over you. And the only reason you're still breathing is because he is allowing it. 
Otherwise, so that makes you a double fool in my eyes. One, you're, you're against God, the very one that's giving you a breath so your pathetic, stupid life can continue. And two, two, you're in the delusion. You're in the simulacrum because you believe that you're providing a Truman Show for us when you're the one on the Truman Show. Ha! See, I'm out of here. I'm just doing this as a duty to the Lord. I'm not bought in. I'm, I'm in it, not of it. I'm not of it. You're of it, and you're in it up to here. I'm not. I'm just like, you know, you get rid of me, I just go to Papa where I started in the first place. Win, 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 win. You lose, 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 lose. Are we clear now? Do we have a bit more confidence than we had yesterday, people? I should hope so. Because let me tell you something. This is no game. This is a life and death situation we're in. And, you know, the weapons of this world aren't the weapons that make it. The people that flip out in this world, you know, and they, they want to fight back um, terrestrially and all that because they're, they're, they're still blind. A lot of these people can make very stupid mistakes. One guy we read about in, in Los Angeles, he felt that there were demons living next door. And indeed there were. And he went and shot them. And now he's imprisoned. See, that's just not the way you fight this. Ephesians 6, ladies and gentlemen. That is the only way to fight and win. I'm only interested in winning. How about you? I'm not interested in losing, compromising. The solutions of the flesh are only temporary. I'm interested in permanent solutions. And I will speak confidently as I ought to speak. You expect nothing less from me. And that's exactly what you're going to get, full service. Now, let me uh, just get to that. I've... Uh, a little bit uh, worked up here. Okay. Now I'm going to simply try to get back to my... Why do they put this in alphabetical order? I mean, I don't understand that. Okay. Let me get to uh, six, please. We're going to read it. You, know, you can't read it too much because it, I know you've been through this a million times. Children. It starts off. Um, where am I? I need verse 12. Ah, okay, here we are. For we wrestle, you know, I mean, you know, he's talking about this. You know, uh, be good people, okay? Be good people, you know, be lawful. And that's what I say. This is so important that you all be lawful. You may think the laws are unfair and unjust, but uh, lawlessness is not your way. You're not the lawless one. You're the lawful one. You, you be lawful, you be helpful to others, and people that are above you, you, even if you don't agree with them, even if they're satanic, whatever, you know, if that's your station in life and they're the boss, you obey that boss. And you do it for the Lord. You don't do it for that person. And you be the best employee, the best whatever you can, you, you're going to be. And you're going to pray for those people that, uh, you know, uh, that God puts in your, in, your, in, in your path. Because we don't want any to perish, do we? We don't. At the same time, you know, most of them do not have a clue what I just said. They're just horrified. I mean, they do, but they, they're in denial. They don't want to look at that. And then when, you know, if they hear this podcast, that's going to shake them to the very core. They're going to feel like, their entire world is falling apart. And then that's where you want to pray for them because, by the way, if your whole world's falling apart because of the Zeph report, it's not. The Lord Jesus is breaking it down to get you to him. Now go to him right now and I guarantee you, you'll have a blessed life. But do it now, don't, don't delay. Okay, so finally it says, you know, uh, uh, no, be good masters to your servants. You know, be good bosses and be good employees to your master. Give them the full do the full work they expect. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Absolute. That's the thing. His might is stronger than any Satan, gang stalking, uh, World War Three. all of it. He is stronger than all of it. it his will be done. That's the only place, if that's the power source you have, and I do, that means in me, 
is pure power. The power of a billion suns is right here in me with you right now. The power of a billion suns, what do they have? Nothing. They have to suck off me to get anything. Imagine that. I carry with me the power source that they need. Imagine what a fool that is when they could have their own power source, but they choose instead to cash in their power source to get the goodies of this world, which are fleeting to begin with, and to be famous and liked and whatever else. And they consider us the suckers. <laughs> but in the end, you see, truth be told, they, alas, are the suckers. We're going to go to Romans 1 after this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Faith, 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 faith. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds and therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, which is bringing us full circle here. I've spoken boldly today, but I, you know, the Lord expects nothing less because I have nothing to fear and no man to fear because I have no threat to man. I am no threat to this world. Of, of contrary, the only reason they may perceive you and me as a threat is because they're told that by their superiors who are not flesh and blood, who do feel threatened by God or God's children. And that is why Psalm 2 was written because the, the kings and queens of the earth, they plot against the Lord and his anointed. If you belong to God, you are his anointed. You have to have been anointed with gifts. Every single one of us who belongs to the Lord has gifts. If you think you don't have gifts, you might want to check to see if you belong to the Lord or not. Because by definition, you have gifts. You have eternity. You have eternal life. You are joint heir in Christ. That is, you have dominion over the entire, all, whatever reality is. Not the earth. But whatever it is. Or the perceived earth, I should say. Because there's a there's a future earth too. And, you know, I don't want to get into all of it, but there's a time when all this dimensionality and all this simulacra stuff stops. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that part of it. All of this comes to a complete breathtaking halt. That's what the end of all time is all about, is all this game playing coming to a halt. All the people that were actors, listen to this. If they all took their masks off, you'd be surprised how your work is fake, your life at home is fake, your gym and your gym membership is fake, your wife is fake, your kids are fake, everything is fake. You go, no, I know I had those kids. Oh, I don't, you've seen, they, they look like you and all that. Yeah, well, you believe all that, and that's the problem. You see, you believe in all that, and you believe, therefore, you should conform, because after all, it is reality. And they go, gotcha, sucker. Another one bites the dust. Bum, bum, bum. 
Another one bites the dust. You gave in. You looked in. You thought it was real. You blinked. Boom, they got you. But you see, now your ride has come to a close. Because in Satan's zero-sum game, uh, they do run out of goodies. <laughs> and that's where we are today. That's why they call it the end times. <laughs> no goodies. You really want to sell your kids out for nothing? I mean, don't you wouldn't be the biggest fool in the world. I know these guys who've sold out for rock and roll and they're, they're working at the 7-Eleven and they're, uh, you know, uh, 45 years old. I mean, nothing wrong with working at the 7-Eleven. But, you know, they didn't get what they bargained for. Wouldn't it be nice if they worked at the 7-Eleven and still were intact rather than scalped? Oh, yes. Every single person that gives consent gets scalped. And they tell you, which is a lie, and I'm going to tell you the truth here. You, before you get mad at me and start throwing your iPod around the room, listen to this. They told you that once you cross this line, you passed the point of no return, didn't they? Keep your mouth shut. Keep your nose to the grindstone and one day it's going to work out for you. Didn't they tell you that? And it hasn't worked out, has it? But you're missing something vital, something you need. And you have to also feed on the innocent because you, like the others around you, need a power source or you can't keep going. That's why they call it love. You know, the Eric Clapton song, Let It Rain. If I send my love to you, be sure to send it back. When I hear this, be sure to send it back stuff, that's where the red flag pops. They're talking about energy. Well, you have sex as energy, I suppose. You know, um, you know, the, maybe that's what they're referring to. But whatever it is, it's a quid pro quo. It's not of God, it's of the other side. Let it rain. Let your love rain down on me. It's just totally carnal. It's just totally, it's like, if I give my love to you, be sure to give it. I heard that lyric the other day. I'm like, wow, that, that is really sinister and horrible. That is really awful. That was a double-double. Okay, found out. Okay, got it. Boom. Okay. Uh, if I give my love to you, I don't put a condition on it. It's agape. You know, um, the only way I want you to give back to me is, well, if we're having a sexual exchange, I suppose. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not, you, you know, you don't make love to a corpse. Oh, I guess some people do. <laughs> that, that's because they're geniuses, that's why. Um, so look, here's the deal. Oh, don't worry, they'll have, uh, no, they, they, they'll have a marriage, you know, it'll be illegal to not, you know, make a cake for a marriage of a, of a cadaver and a human, right? Because the guy likes to have sex with a cadaver. Who are we to judge? I mean, that's how absurd, sick, and dumb, and, you know, ridiculous this whole thing is. That the very people stalking you aren't worth your time of day. But it is scary. Okay, let's go back over some of this. Number one. Praying for your enemies heaps hot coals on their heads. Yes, that's another method. That works. Uh, but all this requires what? what? What does all of Ephesians hang on and a lot of all, all Paul's epistles hang on? What are they? What is the main thing? Faith, faith, and faith, especially like Hebrews 11. Faith. Okay? Faith. That's the thing missing in most Christians. Faith. They're Christians, they say they are, they stand up, they go to church, whatever. They have no faith because they're not allowed to. Why? Because faith would mean you're breaking away from the group and becoming an individual because you get stronger in the faith, you're pers you grow. You don't grow more into a hive. The churches are all hives. They're all hotbeds of hive activity. Um, have they always been there? I don't know. You know, I'm just saying that's what it is now. That's why the United States is, and that's why, you know, had there been pulpits that probably wouldn't be in the place we're in right now. But obviously, we don't have pulpits here. We have sellouts instead. And then, you know, um, it, you, you know, if you go there and you feel like you're not going to conform, they will eventually throw your ass out. 
If you keep trying to go back there and just attend services, they will get a restraining order on you because they don't want the others to see someone free or someone they look down on and they say, look at that sniveling little awful horrible person and they do character assassination. Who does that? Gang stalkers and bullies. What do they do? They come into your area of life, spread bad rumors about you, spread it on the internet, say bad things, get other people to join along, put out YouTube videos, whatever. I've been there, I had it all done, and uh, at this point I just have to laugh at it. it it's just how, how transparent, how easy to see this all is. Who are they that come after you? Oh, they're in your religion. They're in your school. They're your neighbors, which of course that's false because you don't have neighbors. We have simulated neighbors, but we don't have real neighbors. Um, but, what's, but it's damn good deception. Oh, yes. But uh, where do they go? Where are they now? Where, where In your old neighborhood? Are they there? Is that neighborhood there? Where is it? Mm -hmm. What happened to those people? Seem you lost touch with them. And the answer is, is the people that were back there, if you go back to check again, they're not the people you knew before. And it's just, it's, it's that way all over the world. Once you understand what I'm talking about, I mean, it, it may take you a while. I don't think you get it today. But once you get it, it's not something I can teach. It's something that it's an inner awakening. But once you see what it is, you won't believe it. You won't believe how you go, is that all? Really? That? You've got to be kidding me. And you're going to have total confidence. You're going to walk in. Hey, this thing started at Walmart. And so they started manifesting and all that. And um, I was doing my, you know, I was kind of trying to ignore it, but the whistle, it was right there. It was not of this world, okay? It was just, it was just like this. <laughs> same thing over and over with a certain weird, eerie, otherworldly consistency and cadence and timing, which um, I thought at first it was a child, but then there was no movement. You know how like in a Walmart, you know, there'll be movement. You know, you'll hear a whistle, it'll be going kind of down the aisle, right, or down back of the store. It was just right there. Didn't move. You know, uh, the equivalent would have been someone standing in the aisle, staring blankly at the, uh, whatever the products were on this aisle, one over from me, and um, just staring at nothing and doing a blind stare whistle over and over the same thing for a long time because I kept looking for the toothpaste that was uh, non-fluoride I couldn't find it so I was there maybe 10 minutes trying to see every little label and it never stopped you could say well that you know no no it was inhuman but again all these other things started manifesting people and everything so I knew from that okay because I've been through this so many times people so many times so I know when it starts up. So it started up, and then all the people started manifesting. It was like, okay, okay, Lord, it's on. All right. And I rebuked it in the spirit. In Jesus' name, I rebuke thee. I send all you demons to the pit in Jesus' name where you belong. Break this curse now, Lord, in Jesus' name. You know, that sort of thing. And then um, what would have been very intelligent for me to do would be to look at one of them and just kind of like start laughing or stick my tongue out. Um, that uh, causes them to then run like little rabbits and they just run away. And then you're free to do whatever you want to do. Have a good day. Short of that kind of mocking, the prayer works. But the best of all methods is the mocking. And then if you really want to mock them, if you really, really, really want to get to them, you say, God bless you to one of them. Oh, may you be blessed today. Oh, that's a nice smile. Oh, I like your hat. And of course, you know, that disarms the whole situation. I know that sounds very surfacy, but you have to understand, you know, when the situation is diffused, you're no longer in the dimension you were in. The, the whole scene has changed. Those people may not even remember, or you they, they may just like act differently than they just were and have no recollection of how they were because they're not the same as they were. 
I said, it's weird how that works. But see, it's all for you. The entire store is there for you, and it could all come alive. In fact, I, I sort of neutralized it after that aisle, and then I, um, I checked out and I went to the dogs waiting for me in the uh, truck, and uh, it was all just, you know, fine. Didn't put my mind on it again. I, I just note that it happened, and I, I guess I had a... I guess they backed it off. And when they back it off again, it's another demand. You know, the whole place is like, you know, it just, it just isn't there. First there is a mountain, then there is no mountain, then there is. Remember that Donovan song? First there is a mountain. Dun, dun, oh, Juanita, eh, I call you. Dun. They're always having some kind of like Spanish thing going with all this too. Right? Um... Well, because they are entering into another dimension, and then there they can kill somebody, have sex, whatever. Once you're in that other dimension, you're in a circle, anything can happen, right? Does it go back to old? No, I think it's, I think that all the references to the, to the Spanish references throughout it, I think it all goes back to like ancient dark magic and things like that. And, you know, and, and uh, Jimi Hendrix had a song called Spanish Castle Magic, you know, that's exactly what it was you know, dealing with this whole issue again. Well, it's not in Spain, but all the same, it's a groovy place. You know, or you could liken that to Ichiku Park. To Ichiku Park? To that, what will we do then? We'll get high. We'll get high? What does that mean? What does it mean on drugs? You know, they're breathing, they're feeding. Getting high means you're feeding. And that has to be on the trauma of others and, and uh, either sex or death, right, or both. So you got, you know, you got all that working. Because if they don't do that, if they don't go to Ichiku Park, well, then you see they're just going to fade away into nothing. It's like the picture of Dorian Gray. That's the deal they made. They have to feed. Just like vampires have to feed, they have to feed. They need plenty of you around. Now, I made my case to, the, to these people from the Zephyr Report. I said, you know, in my talk about equilibrium, I was preaching to them. I was explaining how if you get rid of upset the balance of equilibrium, if you upset the balance of God's laws of nature, then you, uh, people who are dependent on feeding and stuff, you will perish. You're not going to devolve into machine. And they, they got it. I mean, they got it. They understand we need equilibrium here. Uh, the wise ruler would keep as many lambs around as possible because they need to eat. I mean, I mean, I know it sounds crass to say it like that, but you see, they, they, you, you, don't, you don't slaughter them all. Otherwise, you have no food for the winter. You starve to death, you see. It's game over. Becoming machine is not going to feed what they need to feed. They're feeding because they need to feed to feed the, the thing, that the beast, the whatever. They got to feed that that keeps them alive. And uh, because they gave up their souls, because they gave up their power source. Because they thought, ah, that's a small thing to give up. I want the world. I want the trinkets. I want the gold. I want the, 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 the you know, I want to be just like Bruce Jenner. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I make a faux pas? Oh, gosh, that's terrible. I mean, Caitlin. You know, or I want to be both. I just want to have all the world has to, I want attention. I want to be liked. I want to be amazed. I want to be mind blown. I want my, I want to fly like an eagle to the sea and feed the, that'll feed the, if I do that, the children will be fed. They'll feed. I'm going to, Abracadabra, reach out and grab you. <laughs> anyway, um, none of it is uh, nice. Yeah, it's all pretty nasty. But, you know, the, the, the thing is, the most important thing is the trauma, not the sex. Sex is like it's, it's, a, it's a movable orgy all day long. So anything goes all day long. Anyone in the club, whatever, they, 
everybody is everybody. If everyone has it, does it with everybody, it's a constant that's just forever and ever. And then, then when people act like proper and prim to have morals, and they open the door for the ladies, and all, they just get laughed off the stage. You know. It is a set, and the set is for the, uh, the people they need to feed on. So they spend all kinds of money, you know, on all these elaborate sets. And like, you know, you go to school and then your classmates, and I had one incident where the, the classmates were all a little actor. They were not, none of them were classmates. They were all uh, bought and paid for to be there because I was there and they were trying to like break me down and, you know, make me a Satanist and all that. And I, you know, I was like, school, really? You know, in, 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 in a, you know, 11th grade? Are you serious? And they were, as a heart attack, baby, they were serious, man. They wanted it and they wanted it now. And I'm like, well, well what do you mean? Anyway, they, they wanted me to, um, uh, you know, I don't know, take my clothes off, whatever. They wanted to have a jump into the feeding orgy or something. Something to that effect. I, I, I was so um, kind of incensed and insulted with... Uh, just, just because I realized at the time that most of those kids there were, in fact, it was proven. I went back um, with my dad because I had to go get a note and whatnot. And I had a meeting with the guy and he said, well, what did I do wrong? You know, the, the guy didn't come up with anything. He didn't say anything I did wrong. You know, I got sent home. He didn't say anything. He, they were just like, well, you know, we want you to be a good kid and follow the rule, do some good studying. He said, yes, sir, that's exactly what I'm here to do. He was different. He was not the one that was there trying to, you know, get some pedophile thing going with me. Um, the, uh, well, I recognize that because I've been down that road, unfortunately, as a victim. And, you know, I'm not a victim in life, but I mean, you know, they just feel they can have their way with you. So that, that man was gone. There was another man there. And then the students were not, were literally not the same, meaning they weren't, none of them were the actual you know, it wasn't like they looked like the same one. No, they weren't the same people at all. I mean, they were different people, literally different people. And uh, so that was, it was a setup, you know. It was, a, it was a setup that one day. And then the next day it was not a setup. I was like, oh, I could just come back to class. Oh, it's, nothing happened. The guy did, never said I did anything wrong. He just wanted to, you know, it was really a meet and greet with dad and uh, me. And it was like, okay, you know, I'm grateful to be here in school and I'm, follow the rules and, you know, I'm sorry if I, you know, misunderstood anything and he acted like there was nothing misunderstood, everything was fine and thanks for having your dad down here, it was great to meet him and, uh, you know, welcome to class. Like nothing ever happened. I looked around for people that were being sheepish and not meeting my eyes. I scanned them and I found a few. There's a couple of girls and another guy, you know, who's, who kept looking away like they wanted to tell me something but uh, they, they they couldn't see they were trapped you understand and then and then it gets more elaborate than that I mean that's just one example of uh, being a TI for real right being targeted 11th grade in a class where nobody is the, the who they're supposed to be where I kind of thought they were because it was like the first opening days of class and I'm wasn't quite familiar with everyone there. It was my first time going there. It was a school for uh, people that mess up in regular schools. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? But it eventually I grok. I never forgot. I've told you about this before, but not in such stunning detail as I'm telling it to you now. I mean, for some reason, I'm in this kind of state where I can, I can really pinpoint, you know, things where I couldn't before. But anyway, yeah, that was a, a tremendous thing to see the whole class. And they go, and I tried to explain it to somebody a few years ago, and they go, yep. yep. What do you mean, yep? You know about this? You know about actors being there in the classroom? Trying to get you, targeting, having you in an artificial environment? You know about that? And you don't say anything? You asshole, you're not my friend. You're the enemy. You're a traitor. Any of you who withholds information like that is a traitor 
and a thief and a liar and of the devil and you're going to hell and you're going to burn, baby, burn and it's going to be all your fault because you wouldn't speak up. God will curse you. He will curse you. Curse you. He'll curse you. He will curse you to death. But he'll make you a living corpse before you die and you'll beg for death and you won't see it. You'll suffer. And all you had to do was repent. And your repentance means you come clean and say what you know. You stop this. The Lord's, you're not going to have a secret Jesus. Are you? I got Jesus now and I'm going to keep my secrets. I'm spilling, you spill. How dare you come to this podcast and think you're going to keep secrets like that? I knew a guy online, you know, fellow musician, I suppose, who knew all about it when they had a setup uh, for they had a setup for me and they had people flying to see me. I remember that. Yeah, I remember what happened. You remember what happened? Remember the Big Bear stories? Remember the people involved? Well, that was a setup. People are going to fly there to, just to meet me. <laughs> anyway, this guy knew all about it. A guy in the Netherlands. I said, he goes, ah, and I decided not to go. And then I just, I started calling uh, one of the guys of Carnival Barker. Well, you can go back and look at the tape. I guess it would, what, be 2007, 2000, I, I forget when, but back the, back in the way back. Well, that was all bad. It was all a setup, 100%. The guy who was throwing the party, or, you know, he was going to give a talk on Christ consciousness, ring a bell. And he was saying to me, probably he goes, now, if you know there's a prophet, if you know a man is a prophet, then you're going to have to submit to that prophet, is what he was telling me. And then he told me, oh, there's the coyotes out there. Wow. They're all, up, they're all yipping and yapping. Then he told me, ah, Zeph didn't fall into the trap. Zeph didn't fall into the trap. In other words, I talked to him and he said cryptically, ah, ha, ha, ha. Zeph didn't fall into You knew it was a trap? And you didn't warn me? You are not my friend. You never were. You're just another actor in the Truman Show. That's all. And he said, if you know a guy is a prophet, you know, the guy throwing the thing, the guy was, you know, having the, the talk about uh, the Christ consciousness and raising your awareness. It was a seminar, but it was all set up. I mean, and all the people there, it was all, you know, I, I kept thinking it was just about him and them. And I would just sort of pop in there and, you know, just kind of, you know, listen in. And, and, and I didn't think the focus was going to be on me for what reason. And then he goes... You believe a guy's a prophet. You you get to submit. Uh huh. You said that three or four times already. Mm -hmm. And you know, if he tells you to go take all your clothes off and sit in the corner, you take your clothes off and sit in the corner. I thought that was an odd choice of words, don't you? That's literally. Oh, I don't think he remembers saying that because I mean, no one would say that, right? That was like another another glitch in time kind of thing. But anyway, you know, I, I, I discerned what it was. And I said, not only no, but how, there are people that were going to fly there. It's like, I'm, I, 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 it's hard to believe. And then after that, they were so incensed that they spent money on a plane ticket. They were coming, that they, um, they never talked to me again. They, they, they fell away from the Zephyr report. Thank God you've gone. I hope you never come back. And if you do, you better confess all that to me. Or, or it'll be, if you listen, you may be cursed by God. Your life ruined. Tagged. All of you are tagged. All of you are tagged. Anyway, um, when I was going to that situation, people were cheering me on like, I can't believe it. You're going to go out there. You're going to be there with them. It's so good. They were going over the top gushing like crazy talk. Oh, this is going to be great. You know, and all that. And I'm like, Whoa, what are you talking about, woman? And then, of course, when I said, F you, 
uh, you know, and F you for trying to set me up. Because it just turned out to be all about me. I'm like, how could that, you know, I, it's so bizarre. But it's, um, you know, they all drank the Kool-Aid. The answer is, they are all on that other side. And you and I, we're not. You know, they are, we're not. But all these people posed mainly as big-time Christians. And then when that dried up, they became New Agers. They threw the Bible out, they got into the UFO thing, and that's where they are to this day. Or whatever, you know, the paranormal or whatever. You know, they went into New Agey kind of things. That, but they got booted, right? See what happened, what the Lord did? He booted them right out. And then never to return again. Oh, they had their event. You know, I wasn't there. They had it, and they kind of got through it. And then, but it, they never had another one. I mean, that was the end of that kind of thing. Whatever, that, 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 that Christ consciousness thing, that, that dried up right there. Besides, that's a bizarre thing anyway. Christ consciousness, or whatever it was. The con I forget exactly how they put it, but they had some gimmick going. Total carnival barker. You know, you they tell you to get naked and sit on that bench over there and you know make a fool of yourself. You get better do it if it's a real prophet. No one would say such a preposterous thing as that. All of that was about you know triggers and mind control, and and it was all about. Um, you know, getting, what does getting us mean? It means getting your soul scalped. It means having them take your soul. You talk about being targeted. How about being lured to a place where you're the target? And the whole thing is a bunch of actors, you know, coming at you. Why are they coming at you? Because they want to break you down. So you, you finally lose your mind. They break your will. They break your spirit. And then they raise you back up as one of them. That's why they're after you. You know what I mean? That's what they want to do with you. That's what they want. They want you to become a willing slave to give your consent, and then you have to do what you're told. And they, you know, anything short of that could get you killed. You know, if it's, it's all them and just one of you, you know, <laughs> you don't stand a very good chance. It's either fish or cut bait right there, buddy. And then if you do get killed, oh, where did he go? It disappeared. I don't have no idea what happened. You know, they just, and that happens all the time. People just disappear. They go, I don't know, he, he, he was here, and I don't know what happened. Missing person never gets solved. That's the end of that. Because they can't reveal to you the secret of the whole thing, the multi-layered interdimensionality of it. They can't reveal all that to you, and then, and then it's like, you know, if you don't join them or die, or they kill you, uh, they can't just have you walking around with that info. So it's it's... It, it, if they get you isolated somewhere, it's one or the other. And if you disappear, oh well, join the millions and billions that that happened to. There are dangers out there, folks. So all this pertains to the T-I, which now goes into a much deeper meaning than T-I. Uh, you are, you know, at the same time, you know, they consider you the unwashed masses, because there's a lot of you. And, you know, basically they're there to feed off you as a, like I say, a power source. And my point to the powers that be was, if you get rid of all these people, these innocent pure hearts and whatnot, or bouncer off the mirror people, uh, then um, you don't have uh, a life. You, you cease to exist. So then they got the idea of the Albert Pike, you know, the, the, the whole Pike approach was that they had their own power source. It's like, no, Lucifer's not a power source. So they can't draw off that. They had to, you know, they can't just eliminate four-fifths of the population on the earth and have any power left. They wouldn't have any. See what I mean? They would all perish. There would be, they would starve to death. So I think the powers that be, the real powers that be, you know, the, the fallen angels, etc., the watchers, whatever, they really know this. They know that by all means, they want to keep it going. They, they, they do. And the approach that of, say, the you know, kind of World War III, wipe out the populations, plague, whatever, all these things in the Illuminati card game, if they follow through with all those things, they themselves are dead. You see, the math does not work. And that's what I perceived when, when it came time to, you know, uh, 
well, they've they've shipped in all the, the, the all the ISIS and Al Qaeda people, the whole thing. They shipped them all in here with the immigrant thing, you know, and into Europe with the idea of having all these cells and triggering them to do awful things. While the powers that the little powers that be, the ones you know, the neocons and such, will provide the weapons for them to go do the awful things they're going to do. Terrible, terrible. To think about that for a minute in terms of being set up. So the, all the American people are being set up by these people that are acting one way, like they're, they're your friends, they're doing all this other stuff. How's that different from school? How's that different from the things I've been through? It's exactly the same, only on a wider scale. Thus, the American people are the TIs. Even though they think they're in the know, they are targeted for extinction. And, um, you know, with the changes that are happening, that may not happen. I'm not saying we're not going to get into World War III, but you see there's a, obviously a, another program in place, and they're telling Washington to sit down and shut up. And they are, you know, I mean, they, they have to. They have to let Putin do his thing because, uh, you know, because the, 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 all the powers that be are the powers that be for this planet. And if they don't do uh, what they're ordered to do, or if anyone gets in the way, they get removed permanently. So it happens. So the guy goes through, he takes out ISIS, whatever, you know. So the, the point is, is that uh, I don't know that it'll be totally, they'll, they'll say, oh, you bomb them, but they're still there. It's like, okay, so we want to have a war between the rebuilt ISIS, which I guess America rebuilds, versus, you know what I mean? It just, do the math, it doesn't work out. Right now it's a mess. You got China jumping in there. It's a, it's a complete mess. It's like China, Russia, uh, Iran, et cetera, versus the United States and what, Europe? Europe's a joke right now. Who? The, the, the NATO? Ha <laughs> ha, good luck with that. Take 15 minutes to wipe out NATO, and and they know it. So you know it's, it's just no matter which way you cut it, like you can always war game it that we'll go down to the bunkers and just kill everybody on top of the nuclear war, whatever. Bottom line is the people in the bunkers lose. No matter what side they're on, everyone loses. So that's why that hasn't happened, probably, or maybe it's not possible for it to happen. I don't know. Seems that the nuclear weapons are the the, um, the there's higher powers that are involved in those, and if they don't want them to fly, they don't fly. You know, it's almost like we 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 don't have power over everything here. God has the ultimate dominion over it all. What I've always said to people is, God is. I'm not gonna. You know, I I perceived when I was very young that what they wanted was you know your soul, but they don't they don't get to keep it. They want it. They, what they're saying is they want it extracted out of you. And they want to replace it with the hive soul that they all have that, that makes you like them. You were bitten by the vampire. Yeah, now you have to feed. But notice in all the vampire movies, which are metaphors for you know this life, for this, uh, the vampires always have to feed on somebody in it. They can't feed on themselves. They can maybe for a while, but they have to get a taste for the, the intact human. And that they can't be detected. If everybody was a vampire, then the vampires would all die. Because they, they, they are dependent on uh, innocent blood. So it's a metaphor. It's a, actually an allegory, in a way. Right? So, um, you know, that's the spiritual map of things. Uh, did people die in Oregon? The more I look into it, the more that I don't see bodies, I don't see blood, I don't. I see they did a drill last week for a shooter there. So it's getting more dicey every second. The story has completely fallen apart. The way Obama jumped the shark, the reason they didn't have to wait for the bodies to people to mourn and grieve is because maybe there are no bodies. He just immediately pivots into this like he's really mad. He's mad, he's frustrated at himself because they can't push a gun control thing right now. I mean, they can make it a campaign issue, I suppose, but that's about all they can do. Um, you know, all of these shootings are done, you know, by uh, the powers that be, you know, the little powers that be, by, by you know, the government or whoever they are. You know, they, 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 they stage all these things. And I don't know, you know, yes, real people die, too, and real people get hurt. 
um, because they want their way. They want to come confiscate the gun. They're, they're going to have a shooting like this every week until they get their way. You know, and I don't know how they pull it off. I, you know, they were trying to make this guy a white guy. They, CNN was trying to put makeup on him. You know, he's a, like a mixed race, kind of a black guy, supposedly did the shooting. And then they tried to make him white and, you know, a disgruntled white guy. Yeah. And that just shows how completely mind controlled, evil and messed up CNN is. I still, I still look at it because I can discern it. But I mean, uh, yeah, they pull stuff like that. It's the, 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 um, you know, the white male. They want to target and they want to eliminate from the society. Absolutely. They want to make it all the white man's fault or whatever they, you know, whatever stupid. I mean, the people there are really dumb. You know, got to have an IQ of like 90 to work. You have to be a yes, not up and down and do some knee service too, to, 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 to actually be an employee of CNN. You have to, you know, worship Jeff Zucker and you have to, you know, play the game and play pretend and, uh, read the script you're told to read if you're an anchor. You have to just do what you're told. And they confabulate the news. They make it up like fiction every day. But the funny thing to me is how all the agencies, without much uh, intersection, all come up with the same stories. It's just amazing to watch that. You just watch the hive in action when there's no contiguous, there's no uh, connecting tissue of uh, apparent, but, it, but obviously there is in the spiritual realm. Well, they all have a certain spirit. They're very mean people. Like if you see them and they, you know, they're nasty. And uh, some of them drink a lot because they're trying to knock back the, uh, the lie and the, uh, living a life of constant life. When I think of that, I think of Dan Rather knocking back, you know, he, he, I, he just seemed like a guy who's so double-minded and so twisted and so messed up that, uh, you know, he used to threaten people on the street. He was known for being mean, you know, and you know, threatening to, to, to really hurt people. Well, it must be tough. You, know, you took the money and you had to keep your mouth shut. You know, to, it's, you, you had to say stories you were told. To, it must be very difficult. It's, it's got to be tough on somebody. But then again, you know, the soul was checked in at the door. They ran around the track and it was all fake. You know, they got to be mad. Now they want their soul back. This, come, this brings me to the conclusion of our talk today, ladies and gentlemen. To get the soul back, one needs the Lord Jesus Christ. That's called redemption. To redeem your soul. That means stuff it back inside the box there. That's you. Jesus is the answer. They'll tell you you passed the point of no return. God doesn't want you. You committed the unpardonable sin. You did not. Sorry, you're a prodigal son or daughter is what you are. Well, most of you that became even very successful, that's, you, you may be a prodigal son or daughter too. You know, it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be in the pig field. Usually, though, people that belong to the Lord are treated horribly on the other side. They may join up and, you know, go through all that, but the, the highest they ever get is janitor. You know what I mean? They don't, they, there's nothing there for them. But, but not always the case. Some are high rollers and some are, you know, they're, they're people come in all different you know, categories. But they all need one thing desperately. Every one of these people needs something. They need redemption of their souls. They need redemption of their persons. They need to be cleansed. They need to be, you know, they need that, that awful, horrible thing that they've become. They need that washed clean. The only thing that can do that is the blood of Jesus Christ. Because think about it. That blood that was spilled, that innocent blood, is the blood that saves the whole world. I mean, without that, we have nothing. So they want that, and they need that, and they, and they will, you know, they'll... Um, and they'll do whatever they, you know... <laughs> they may not know they need it. But I mean, those who know, I, I should reword that by saying this. Those who really know the Lord re recognize they need that blood and they need that daily bread and they need that blessing constantly and will do whatever they have to do to get it because there is no other life. The bread of life. We must eat the bread of life or there is no life. That's the power source we have. You know, I, I, I kind of 
a little bit misleading. I'm not trying to say that your soul is a power sword. That's another technical issue that I have to, you know, your soul has power, obviously. It's, it's being intact, you have power, whether you know it or not. But when you give them that consent and they, they take that from you, um, you, you, you have no, uh, you're not intact and you need to be intact. And, but the power that you can get is so powerful. The power that you can get is so powerful that you, you, you can, you lord it over all, all the, uh, the little humans. You could become very powerful. And, uh, you, you know, for example, you can be given gifts there that you earn, of course. You can be given gifts of tremendous talents that you would have never had before. Like you're channeling so-and-so or Michelangelo or, you know, or Jim Morrison or whatever, or Jimi Hendrix. All of that is, uh, you know, up for grabs. That's why people run over there because they want to, you know, be touched by, because they realize if they keep going on their own, they're never going to be great, right? The only way they're ever going to be great is they need that. So a lot of athletes go there, you know, for that, to, to, to be truly great and make that bargain because they want um, true greatness and they want, they want to excel. And if they don't do something or make a move, they're going to just sink into the sea of humanity, uh, you know, uncelebrated, unsung, uh, mediocre, maybe just having a hard life. And they don't want that. So, you know, I understand the motivation. Um, I just don't like being, um, you, you know, targeted by them when they have no standing with my Lord. So therefore they have no standing with me. I'm st I stand in judgment of them ultimately. I am their judge. Ultimately, my position is I have the power you know, the, to co-judge, you know, not the soul judge, but I, mean, I, I really have the power over them, don't I? But yet they're treating me like I'm just a nothing and I, and I need to be kicked around and they're, and they're there to tell me what to do and all this other stuff, they got to be out of their mind. The Lord God is the power source that I have. Therefore, uh, you know, separating them from their little hive they really have nothing, so it's it's kind of like, I, you know, they're the pathetic one. And when you finally see them in that context, when they start, oh, when they start in coalescing and you say it's called gaslighting and, and all that, um, there's no script and there's no place they meet, okay? They pop right out of that dimension ready to go. They've already rehearsed somewhere else some, you know, off world, some other dimension and then boom, that pops in and all of a sudden there they are. And then it, then it goes the next day and you look out the window and it's not there anymore. First there is a mountain, then there is no mountain, then there is oh Juanita, I call your name. Eh. Da, 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 right? Begs the question, how many are there in the United States? Well, my message to all of you is this. You, you haven't gone past the point of no return. You need redemption. And if you don't do something about it, since you're tagged right now, if you've heard any part of this podcast, you were tagged. If when you're tagged, it means, and you can check it in the weeks and months to come, you'll notice that uh, the connections are going, you lose your job, you, you know, you're spiraling down. And what the tagged person has to do is um, accept the Lord and just go that way and, and just embrace it with all your heart and might and strength and that's you'll be okay. That's the benefit of being tagged. You get to repent, you get to come home, you get to get right. But continuing on in your lifestyle, no. You wouldn't even be listening to the Zephyr Report if you didn't want to change. Well, if the Lord ministered to you at all, it means he's, he, he, he tapped you. And if he taps you, he tags you. As a result of this, this happens all the time. You know, we bless people, we tag people. If you, you attack one of our people, then you get tagged. And it's just, you know, it just comes back on you. And there's only one thing you can do then, and that's accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and, 
and really just go with him, go with God, and then everything kind of takes care of itself at that point. But no, you do not have the option to stay on Satan's side. No, you cannot. If you do, they will all eventually shun you. Well, you shouldn't have picked on the wrong people anyway then, right? Then that wouldn't have happened. But you couldn't help yourself. You felt so confident. You feel that this is taking candy from a baby. Lo and behold, you tried to take it from a baby in your mind that there was no baby. And, well, now you have the result. So repent. You know, I know it's hard because you know, once you do, there's going to be every temptation in the world trying to get you to go show you it's the wrong path and show you, you know, people don't like you and you know, how is this going to work. And, and you know, you, you're gonna, it's going to take a miracle for you. But the alternative is suicide. Believe you me, in this world, there are plenty of people on Satan's side uh, who've, who've experienced lots of goodies who've committed suicide, a lot. You don't even want to know how many, but a lot, who realize they, they, they've, they've made a mistake. They're losing ground now. They're falling, they're, they're, they're falling like a lead balloon. And instead of you know, enduring that, they'd rather off themselves. Case in point, some of these bankers, you know. And... Uh, you know, they, they fed at the trough. But see, the problem is, it's that the mind control is so bad and so thick, telling them, well, you've gone past the point of no return. We got the Kansas song, too. To the point of no return. It's like, there is no point of no return. Satan does not own your soul. You cannot make a deal with the devil to sell your soul because you can't sell that soul. All that's happening there is you are giving consent to yourself separating from God. It's your free will that's done it, not Satan. And with your free will, you can accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If your free will, and then you're redeemed. I mean, it's, that's within your power. I can't feel sorry for somebody that has the power to change everything but won't because why because people may they don't like you right now so it's not like they're going to dislike you they hate you right now they hate each other they hate they hate everything their hatred is is one of their is what they call love hatred and that's how twisted they are so no um who cares uh let me put it another way with friends like that who needs enemies well, they might target, well, uh, you know, they could either, you can either take your chances of being targeted because, you, you know, you targeted people, so you figure, oh, crap, they're going to eat me up. Well, they may try, but the alternative is non-existence, uh, dereliction, you know, the mumbling guy walking down the street, that's more like you. That's not one of God's people. That's what happens to people who try to go their own way. When things don't work out, you know what they do, Fat? Once you lose your job and you lose your savings, you lose everything, whatever you've got, they distance themselves. You'll notice. You know, they, when, you know, when there's a divorce, they take one side, usually the wife's side. You know, they, the husband's the psycho. They distance themselves. You lose your job, the people at work, no, they... they hey, what's happening? How about a barbecue? So, no, they don't invite you to the barbecue anymore, do they? Oh, no. You, you got fired, you lost your job, and the first thing they're going to do is distance themselves. They don't want to share in your shame. Are we being quite painfully clear, sir? Good. Because I wouldn't want to see even one soul perish that could be saved. I don't care what you've done. I mean, I've done bad things myself, and I've done bad things in the last 10 years, you know, and I'm supposed to be on the path of the Lord. I've done bad things too, you know, things I have to repent for, and I do. I, I feel, you know, I never feel really elated. You may notice I never act like a fool. I used to. Oh, problems are over now, dude. You know, and I, you won't hear me saying that. No, I'm always looking up, kind of afraid. You know, I'm. It's. I. I. I feel like I've let the Lord down a lot of the time. And you know, this is something that I've agreed—a burden I've agreed to carry with me. You know, and uh, and I agree. I haven't done. You know, I've done well at times, and then sometimes I've really done horribly. 
sometimes if it's Satan talking to God, you know, say, how about my servant Job? He'd go, look at your, look at your boy Zeph there. <laughs> he just did this or that. <laughs> what kind of a servant is that? Well, he could have had a lot of things, but he didn't give you his. He's still intact, and you're not. Well, I thought your children had to be much more than intact. Well, he praises me. Have you ever talked about yourself from God's perspective? He praises me, he loves me, he needs me. And then, you know, he gets tested. You know, the demons come acting like it's me and it's not. And, you know, they tell him it's okay to do this and that and it's not. And, uh, you know, they go against orders I've given him, things I've, you know, indicated or to, led him to do. And then he's gone against that. And then he's been out of my will and then back and forth and then bad things happen. Yeah, oh yeah. It's been a, it's, yeah. Well, we know all this because it's all on videotape. So we see everything. That's why we see everything. And, you know, uh, not everybody is going to be and act like a monk and whip themselves if they get a desire. Um, you know, that's what they did in the Middle Ages. And, of course, that didn't work out so well for them, now did it? We have the flesh. The flesh wants what it wants. And, you know, at times we lose the battle. You know, that's just that simple, but it is a battle we try to put down the flesh to bring up the spirit so that we can walk in the spirit, not the flesh. Because in the flesh, the flesh profits nothing. In the flesh, I want this, and I want that. And I feel this, and I feel that. And, um, you know, if uh, whatever kind of weaknesses or anything that I've had in the flesh, they come full bloom, like, it's okay to go this way. It's okay to be weak. It's okay to, right? And you, what, slacken your morals, and the next thing you know, you're, you know, you're full, full bore at the uh, trough. And once you're there, you've pretty much given consent, and it doesn't take much more to go all the way through. But I'm here to tell you that if you've been all the way through, or so you thought, and you see that, you know, this is not where you want to be, you have not gone past the point of no return. Don't let them say that to you. That is wrong. You can repent. And, um, but I'll just put it this way. Should you repent, it's very important for you that have been benefited on that side of things, you know what I mean? And, and been somebody and been whatever. To, to, when you make that kind of a change, you mustn't look back. You must keep moving forward, even if it's hard. Through blessings, whether I abase or whether I abound, I have, you know, I am glorified in Christ only. That's where my focus has to be. I'm not saying you would, you know, go back. If you tried to go back, they'd just kill you anyway. <laughs> you know, once you've, you know, right, you couldn't be trusted after that. But I'm just saying, oh, they play, they're enemy, they're vindictive. They're like Obama when he goes, oh, we're keeping track, people. You people who've done anything to the administration, you watch out. We're, we're keeping score, he says. That's right out of the Satanic Bible. He is Mr. Satan. He is like everything he says is perfect, perfectly in that spirit of Satan, right? We're keeping track. We're, we're digging up the dirt on you. We're, you know, we told Romney to stand down and can't whoop you next time in the debate so that I could win because it's already been rigged that I would win. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look how stupid people are. <laughs> yeah, well, it is and it isn't. You know, there's a world where there's a real election and there's a world where there's a fake election. And sometimes we're in one or the other or sometimes it moves back and forth and sometimes it's, it's good. There's a, there's a good world. You know, a lot of time just due to our own misbehavior and our own sin life, we wind up in, you know, I used to talk about this as soul tracks. You know, you've, your track changes, can change daily. I mean, there's been, you know, I used to read the obits when I find there had been someone died a couple of years ago, then they just die right now. You can tell how you've tracked, you know, through and, and every once in a while you'll get an anomaly like that to, to show you that it's not contiguous. Certainly, from the gang stalking perspective, all that gaslight, everything that you've that terrifies you, it's not contiguous, as you know. So it's there, then it's not there, then it's there, and you'll notice that it's it's different. 
You know, it's like they've changed the set on you. The people even seem a little different. That people you've known for a long time. You know, it's 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 just a really hard to uh, shoulder this yourself. You know, it's much easier in the Lord because uh, the Bible deals with all this. There's plenty of incidents in the Bible of of you know being compassed round about with people and being stalked and. You know, David crying out. You know, we talked about this with my friend yesterday, how David cried out and, and wanted, you know, will the Lord save him or just leave, leave him there to be gobbled up by the gang stalkers, you know? Uh, there, there's all that. Um, you know, it, it, the bullying and stalking can go from being in the wrong political party so that there's people terrestrially stalk you to the supernatural, you know, you go somewhere you've never been and they seem to know you, you know, that sort of thing. It's when they seem to know you, and, and they do know you, which is, it, it's true. It's not your, see, the mistake that um, victims make is they think it's, they're being paranoid when they're not at all. And there's a lot of other deceptions going on. I mean, you know, we're all being stalked as, say, America or different countries uh, by other countries. And they're doing it through cyber warfare and, you know, they're, they're, they're spying on you and they're trying to, you know, get what you have and everything. But anyway, uh, we've covered it all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off right now. And uh, uh, and I will, I will send you a mighty blessing. Two hours, 45 minutes, folks. So it's, you did get the best of me. You know, it's almost three hours. I think it's two uh, maybe it's too long. But hey, the other talk show hosts go three hours, so here's your three hours. And you could break it up, too. And I bid you shalom in Jesus' name, peace and blessing, and uh, the love of the Lord in your life right now. Amen.